Good day, everybody, and we are back again together. All right, so uh, we are looking at the Mpumalanga paper, continuing to look at those questions. Yeah, the last question that we looked at was quite interesting, okay, particularly the last part. Uh, please, I still welcome your comments on it, um, you know, just to tell me. And if there's anyone who's an educator, by the way, uh, please just let me know if, uh, you know, there was a way in which you could tackle that in an easier way. Uh, I would really, really appreciate it. Right, so uh, we are looking at electrodynamics now. Uh, please remember, if you haven't subscribed, please remember to just hit that subscribe button and, you know, that notification bell to remind uh, yourself, okay, every time or rather to get notifications every time that we post a new lesson. All right, so uh, for those of you who need assistance in uh, mathematics or physical science, please just uh, don't forget uh, to just send us an email and our email address is info at mlungisingosi.co.za. Right, let's get on ahead with it. Okay, so a household appliance is marked um, uh, 800 watts and 220 volts. Please remember, when they give you a power rating like that, just keep in mind that it actually will always be the average power so it will be p average okay so it will be p average as well as v rms okay so just keep in mind when they give you that power rating there uh, it's the rms voltage as well as the average power so they say to you calculate the resistance of the appliance so you've got v rms you've got uh, p average and you'll see uh, if you go to, you know, your, um, you know, your formulas table. OK, so you'll notice there. Uh, no, I've actually got the wrong one open. OK, so I want one which has power voltage. OK, and resistance. OK, so you see you've got P average. That's voltage times current. But I want one which has power, voltage, and resistance. Can you see it's going to be this one here, V squared, V RMS squared. So I'm going to say, well, that's going to be 11.1.1. .1. That's going to be P average is going to be V RMS squared divided by R. I'm looking for R. I've got the value for uh, P average. That's 800. I've got a value for my RMS current, uh, RMS voltage rather, that's 220 squared divided by resistance. And then, of course, we can do our gymnastics there, cross multiply. OK, so it means that R would be 220 squared divided by 800. OK, so uh, 220 squared uh, divided by uh, 220 squared divided by 800 okay and I get a value of 60.5 so it means that the resistance would be 60.5 ohms okay right now they say the following simplified diagram diagram rather uh, shows a 3 ohm resistor connected to an alternating current generator so they told us that this is an AC generator. But another way that we could have actually seen that is that, can you see that we've got slip rings there, right? Remember, whenever you've got slip rings, uh, then it tells us that that is an AC generator. Now they say to you, uh, write down the energy conversion that takes place in this generator. Remember that a generator always converts, okay? Mechanical energy into electrical energy. It's the other way with the motor. It con it converts electrical to mechanical. But here, because we've got a generator, it's mechanical to electrical energy. Okay. So 11.2.1. Uh, uh, okay. That was, uh, uh, sorry, mechanical energy. All right. To electrical energy. All right. Of course, you'll write it. Uh, more nicely okay so uh, they say write the structural change 
uh, what structural change rather must take place to this generator to change it to a DC generator. Okay, so in this case, we know it's AC because of those slip rings. So what must we do? We must replace uh, um, uh, or we must substitute uh, the, uh, the slip rings with split rings. Okay, so we must uh, put split rings instead. Right, and then uh, the final question, they say calculate the maximum current that flows through a uh, that flows through the three meter uh, three ohm rather uh, resistor uh, if the resistor delivers an average power of 60 watts now remember they are looking for the maximum current okay they've given us a, a average power there so let's find first so we can now say okay we can find current but remember when i use p average or average power I will get IRMS. So I'm going to say, well, P average, I'm going to use the formula which, which that is current. It's going to be IRMS squared multiplied by resistance. So I've got 60 there. Uh, I want IRMS, but my R is 3, right? So it means that I RMS, oh, sorry, uh, that's I RMS squared. So in this case, what will I have? It means that that's going to be 60 divided by 3. I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides. So that will be 20, and it will be the square root of 20. So I RMS, remember, that's I RMS squared. So I RMS will be equal to the square root of 20 volts. So I'm going to just leave it like that, okay? Right, so, but what were we looking for? For the maximum. So I'm going to simply say, remember, I RMS is I max divided by root 2. So it means if I want to get the maximum, I'll take I RMS and I'll multiply by uh, root 2. So it means that I max will be root 2 times i rms which is root of 20 okay so um if we take those two there uh so this will be um the square root of two times the square root of ah man square root of two okay multiplied by the square root of 20 okay I get a value of 8.94 and obviously it should be greater than that IRMS that should be 8.94 MPS so this would be my maximum value uh, for current all right and essentially that is it ladies and gents and that is how the cookie crumbles so um, please remember, if you haven't subscribed, please remember to do the same, all right? And uh, essentially, it was as simple as that for this question. I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.